projectile motion is free fall in two dimensions. It means that an object is acting under the influence of gravity, it's traveling through space, and we can understand its motion very simply. The acceleration of gravity is down and it's constant. So the equations that we have to work with are the one-dimensional equations of motion in the x direction and in the y direction separately. That's the beautiful thing about two-dimensional motion is you can always think about it as what's going on in the x world and what's going on in the y world. You can treat those separately. You use the same set of equations with the different constants that are appropriate and at the very end of the problem, if you know x final and y final, you know where the object is, you know its motion. So the key to projectile motion is to separate the problem into x and y. Let me show you a picture of projectile motion. Here's an object which was launched sideways. It looks like it had a slightly downward initial velocity, and it's following some kind of a projectile motion. And Let's just think for a second about what is the velocity as a function of time. Not the position as a function of time, but the velocity. So look at the equations of motion. First, let's focus on the x equations of motion. Remember that if gravity is the only force, if acceleration is straight down, then the acceleration in the x direction is 0. So v final x equals the initial x. It never changes. You can see that with these little green components of the velocity vector. This is not the velocity, and neither is that. It's the sum of those two. This is the x component, that's the y component. So the velocity vector itself is always tangent to the curve, and you can see that its horizontal piece is never changing. A little counterintuitive, but absolutely correct physics. What about in the y direction? The y equation of motion for projectile for velocity is v final y is v initial y plus acceleration in the y direction times time. Acceleration in the y direction, I'm calling down positive, is plus 9.8 meters per second squared. So velocity in the y direction is increasing linearly with time. If you double the time, your velocity is twice as much. The way I think about it is acceleration is change in velocity with time, 9.8 meters per second per second. So each second, my downward velocity is 9.8 meters per second more in this direction than it was the second before. You can see that. It started off small, it's getting bigger and bigger. What about the speed as a function of time? We haven't talked about that explicitly. Speed is the magnitude of velocity. It's the length of the total vector. It would be by the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. It's clearly getting bigger and bigger because this component's constant and that component's getting bigger. That makes sense. A falling object is getting going faster and faster if it starts off nearly horizontal. And uh, you can just see it pictorially. Let's ask ourselves, are we set up to solve the most general problem. I mean, have we really finished the story in two dimensions? It's fairly impressive, but we really have. All you need is those one-dimensional equations, and you can solve any problem that you want with constant acceleration, and in particular, any free-fall problem. Here's a rather generic two-dimensional projectile problem. You launch something, so this is ground level, and you launch something at some angle theta with some initial speed v. I could write it as a vector v, but what I'm telling you is what's the speed and what's the angle. That's all you need to know. And I'm telling you where I launched it from. I'm going to call this x, and I'm going to call y up, just for arbitrariness. I would like to ask, well, there's lots of things you could want to know about this. Fundamentally, the big question is what's x is a function of time, what's y is a function of time. Once you know that, you know the motion. You can find velocity, you can find anything. So it's a little bit imposing to have such a generic problem. Let me make it specific. I got this little toy gun, and I'm going to launch it. And I would like to know, if I just fire it, how far is the arrow going to go? So where is it going to land? It's going to fly through the air, 
hits here, and I would like to know the range. That's the word that people usually use. Range refers to how far something goes if it's traveling across level ground. We might give it the name R. That's the puzzle. How do we find R? Of course, it's one arbitrary puzzle, and I could come up with lots more. How high does it get? How long does it take? Let's just solve the first problem first. I'm asking about a horizontal distance. So, you know, here comes the usual story when you're working a projectile problem. I got six equations, the three x equations, the three y equations. Where do I begin? Well, I'm asking a question about the x world. I want to know how far it gets, so I immediately focus my attention on the x equations. And I, I've got three of them, and I'm asking a question about x final, basically. I could call this zero in the x world. So I really want to know x final. That's my unknown. So look at the equations that I have to work with. There's no acceleration in the x world in projectile motion. So the equation is very simple. x final equals x initial plus v initial in the x direction times time. So alas. Uh, I can't solve for x final until I know the time. I do know the x component of the initial velocity, because if I've got the magnitude and the angle, it's just geometry. V i x is just v cosine theta. And v i y is just v sine theta. So I really do know the initial x and y velocities. I feel stuck. I can't find x final until I know time. How do I find the time? Well, it seems like there's really nothing I can get out of the x equations. There's nothing more I can get. I certainly can't learn about the time from the x equations. How am I going to learn about the time? Well, I've only got one other set of equations. Let's look in the y direction. An object in the y direction is going up and back down again. Its x motion is independent of its y motion, so as it travels along this path, it's just climbing up and falling back down again. And I want to know the time when it gets back down to the ground. So what information is that? When it hits the ground, is basically saying y final is 0. y initial is 0, y final is 0. So I jump to the equation y final equals y initial plus v initial y times time. I know v initial y plus 1 half a in the y direction times time squared. That's an equation which has only one unknown, time. And so I'm all set.